listening so that uh, we'll know for sure that uh, uh, we will. So we'll know for sure that there's somebody listening to what we're going to have to oh. say when we introduce yeah. you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, one moment. Uh, what's it like in Sweden today? Well, it's uh, sunny and uh, great weather. Uh, I mean, it's warm, warm for the for the season. And, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I can tell you, it uh, was snowing here as recently as two days ago. Oh, really? That's that's the nature of Winnipeg. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so we Actually, do. We went we do we do have some viewers uh, online right now so oh, cool. uh, i wanted to uh welcome you um uh the viewers and also acknowledge uh bear with us this is something that is very new um the ability to do a live interview on on uh, facebook live and i'm really uh overjoyed today uh to have a friend colleague uh you know someone who i met um several years ago um yeah. We, uh, when I came to Sweden, to specifically to Stockholm, to come to the uh, 99 NICU meetup. So um, I have the privilege today of uh, being online here with Stefan Johansson, uh, who's you. a consultant neonatologist at the Sachs Children's Hospital and associate professor at the Karolinska Institute. Uh, he holds a PhD in medical epidemiology and biostatistics. Um, he is also a social entrepreneur uh, outside of Sweden, known for founding 99nicu.org, which you'll see going along the base there, uh, which is the neonatal staff community on the web. And also Evneo, which I think you'll tell me about a little bit later, which is the Society for Evidence-Based Neonatology. Um, and so um, we, I guess, just before I get into some questions for you, I can say that uh, I also, I guess, am a social media entrepreneur, uh, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Uh, as evidenced by the fact that we're doing this right now. Uh, and uh, that's how we met, was uh, through channels and uh, social media channels and uh, frequently engage each other on uh, Twitter or Facebook. And uh, very delighted that you asked me several years ago to um, share some of my writings uh, on 99NICU as well. Uh, so maybe uh, maybe you can start by, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, can, maybe, maybe can I also just say that I'm uh, I feel honored to be on this uh, live show with you. It's uh, it's really an honor, and I think uh, uh, all the fellows and uh, in pediatrics and in neonatology, I always advise them to connect with your Facebook group and follow your blog, etc. So it's uh, really an honor for me to connect with you this way. It's yeah, great. Well, that's wonderful, and uh, yeah, we have a mutual admiration, which is always nice. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I, I, you know, maybe we could start before we get into, you know, discussing things of, you know, COVID nineteen in particular. Um, yeah. Tell me a little bit about how you started ninety nine and ICU and who it's geared for, uh, in case people want to, you know, check it out. Yeah. Well, um, uh, it's uh, a rather long story. It's dating back since two thousand sixteen. Uh, we started the website even before Facebook was available in Sweden and. Uh, uh, the idea came from, I was um, or am <laughs> interested in Mac computers, uh, Apple computers, and was a member of a bulletin board or discussion forum website for uh, computers called 99mac.se. And I just thought that um, this is an excellent way for professionals to meet. And uh, I thought, uh, as a, a new uh, specialist in neonatology at that time, that we should have something similar in the neonatal community. So that's why this started off in a small group of people. And um, uh, since then, uh, there has been a lot of people engaged. And uh, we have expanded with a uh, well yearly meetup that we unfortunately had to cancel this year because of the COVID uh, pandemic. But uh, yeah, go and check out the website 99nicky.org and see what you find. Yeah, and, what, and what sort of things would people find there? <clears throat> well, uh, there are different uh, uh, sections. So the primary uh, uh, mission or is to create a pla 
a, a communication platform. So anyone that is a member can log in there and start a new discussion on any topic related to neonatology. And uh, then other members can join in and respond to that topic. Uh, so that is a main function. The other function is that we also have a blog section and you, Michael, share a thoughtful post there. Uh, as well as others sometime. And um, we also <clears throat> uh, try to promote uh, uh, conferences by adding, uh, uh, adding them into our calendar and so on. So there's, well, a few sections. Uh, we'll, we have a link collection, for example, where we collect useful links, mm -hmm. like uh, an MRI encyclopedia, for example. Uh, which is quite a good uh, resource. That's, that's great. So, and I hope we soon have an app. Uh, there will be an app available for the software we use. So I hope uh, during, later this year that we will have an app, a 99 NICU app. Uh, we'll see. I'll hope <laughs> to learn from you. Yeah. I mean, I'm in infancy of social media. Um, yeah. I do want to touch on something that I think, you know, moving on to COVID-19, um, one of the things that you and I had the chance to talk about yeah. Uh, I think people would be very interested in hearing about is if, if you Google, um, you know, Sweden COVID nineteen. Yeah. Uh, even in the last twenty four hours, there has been <laughs> several articles, you know, out there yeah. in the lay press about sort of questioning what is Sweden doing, <laughs> how Sweden you know, put these draconian measures in place, and Sweden, yeah. you know, the, the the word is that you're just sort of letting people do what they want, and. Yeah. I guess I would appreciate your thoughts. You know, what, 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 how is the strategy working? Is it working? Uh, and well, is, um, is doing the right thing? yeah, well, I think uh, uh, Sweden is uh, sometimes a target for, you know, the troll, the web troll factories in the world without mentioning any countries or any, anything, well, names and so on. And I think part of the publicity around Sweden is sort of not true, uh, of course. Uh, but I would also say that we don't have the same uh, 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 culture when it comes to leadership. Uh, and that is reflected in the Swedish strategy, I think. Uh, and. Um, uh, we also uh, are rather restricted in our lives in Sweden, but it's based, our restrictions are based on advice rather than uh, lawful action from the politicians in Sweden. So I would say that even though, I mean, I know that uh, even The Guardian in the UK had a long article about the Swedish experiment, but uh, I think that uh, uh, we are rather restricted in Sweden, but on a voluntary basis. Well, that's, that's interesting. So, you know, clearly the Swedes read the newspapers and <laughs> read, <laughs> read, uh, well, does anyone read a newspaper, I guess? The Sw yeah. Swedes look online and yeah. they see other countries yeah. are different. So, yeah. you know, one of the things that I think a lot of the listeners here, you know, might wonder about, because many of us have children, uh, we, of course, have found that we are uh, you know, not sending our kids to school anymore. We're homeschooling. Yeah. Are Swedish children still going to school, or is this? Uh... Uh, yes, uh, uh, children below the age of uh, let's see, uh, thirteen, uh, they go to school as usual. Uh, whereas uh, high school, well, college students and university students have uh, distant teaching, oh, they are. which means uh, video teaching. Uh, so okay. that's how it's done. So, so that is, but, but the schools for younger children are not closed. And I think yeah, that wouldn't work in Sweden because in Sweden, uh, the family structure is that uh, most, uh, uh, if there are two parents, both parents usually work like full time. That's how Sweden is sort of constructed. <laughs> well, that's uh, reality that we're dealing with. You so know, it would have a huge impact on healthcare if yeah. uh, children would be at home. There would be such a lot of people working in healthcare that would have to be at home with the kids. So I think Sweden wouldn't handle the pandemic uh, as good if we had schools closed because staff right. would be lacking. Right. 
All right, well, thank you for that. So I guess the message to the world here that's listening, and incidentally, in case you're wondering, um, <laughs> we, we have people literally, quite quite literally, all over the world. I see Abu Dhabi, I see yeah. Texas. Uh, oh, cool. Sweden, London, um, you know, all, all sorts of places. And I'm sorry, but in Portugal, uh, in Bulgaria, yeah. uh, Egypt. So we've got yeah. lots of people listening in, and, and uh, people, I'm sure, are very curious about the, the Swedish experiment, mm. so to speak. So thank you. <laughs> Um, and so there's been some questions coming up, and I think some of them will be answered in the questions that I'm going to be asking you. Yeah. Um, one of the questions I had for you is, um, with the Swedish experiment, so to speak, um, mm. have, has there been any change over time? You know, um, I know that there's no, um, you know, forced measures by government at the moment, as you're saying, it's more voluntary. But um, have you seen any changes, you know, in the last few weeks? Uh, do you mean uh, with regards to the advice given or uh, or the corona spread? No, advice given, uh, response to corona spread. I mean, certainly, um, you know, mm. I, I looked last night um, and took a look at mortality out in Sweden. Yeah. Certainly, you've not been spared uh, from mortality. No, 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 no. Uh, I, Based on percentage of cases, it's actually fairly high. Um, yeah. So so has the public changed at all? Uh, well, um, if I just can start at the, the spreading <laughs> question. Um, in Sweden, we have a surveillance program for other viral diseases like influenza and uh, gastroenteritic calice virus uh, and also RSV. Mm -hmm. And uh, when uh, uh, we were advised to, to work from home and to have a social distancing of two meters, uh, which is the advice, uh, one could see that the, the rate of, in, of those other infections dropped incredibly uh, <laughs> much. So if we assume that the coronavirus spread uh, in a similar uh, fashion, it would be likely that the spread would also uh, be uh, attenuated. Uh, but we have had, uh, and we are still uh, seeing... Uh, uh, I mean, the healthcare is under high pressure, particularly in Stockholm. Uh, and uh, it seems that other regional uh, towns like Gothenburg and Malmö, they are still sort of uh, on the uphill curve, so to say. We believe in Stockholm that we passed the peak about one week ago, uh, according to the models, the statistical models presented by the uh, public health authority. Uh, but it's but it's hard to to know. Uh, but it seems that uh, from the admissions of to intensive care, for example, that uh, we are sort of on the plateau or on the downhill plateau in Stockholm, at least. And and what are, what are the current thoughts in Sweden about vertical transmission? Well, we, I, I, uh, when it comes to neonatal care and, and corona positive mothers and how to manage the babies, we have a national guideline in place since a few weeks' time. Uh, and uh, we um, uh, do not, uh, uh, we consider the risk to, of vertical transmission to be low uh, because that seems to be the experience from uh, China, for example. Uh, and um, uh, just to give you a practical example, if we know or suspect that the mother is corona positive and the baby is going to be born prematurely, we bring the baby from the obstetric room to the neonatal room directly and then consider the baby to be non-exposed. Okay. And so uh, are you using, are you using um, N95s at birth? Uh, if you have to do an aerosolized generating medical procedures such as intubation or... Yes, uh, yes. Uh, so but, you, uh, or, or, no, uh, can I just uh, <laughs> stop you there? So if, if the mother is, uh, if the baby is taken directly by the midwife to the neonatal room, we consider the baby to be non-exposed and follow our regular Okay. hygiene guidelines so right. we don't have the n95s at that time point that's actually very similar to the way the approach that we're advocating in canada so right yeah i, th I know that i know that yes yeah. so we are we, sorry we are in, we are in line one moment um 
So um, do you allow parents to visit? Uh, if they are healthy. Uh, but uh, again, we, we, we make a distinction uh, between uh, if the mother is uh, known to be COVID positive or the father, we do not allow them into the unit. Uh, Okay. Uh, uh, so if the if the mother is COVID positive and we need to take care of the baby, uh, we preferably do that directly because then we consider the baby to be non-exposed. Yeah. The, hel the healthy partner can then join us to the NICU in a regular way. Uh, okay. On the other hand, if um, we, and this is not an uncommon situation, I mean, if the baby is born and put on the mother's chest and, uh, and then after some uh, 20 minutes or so, uh, the midwife calls the uh, uh, neonatal fellow, then we consider the baby to be exposed if the mother and baby has had close contact. Right. And then we, we, cons we make a completely different uh, uh, approach. So then we transfer the baby in an incubator and nurse and care for the baby in the NICU as if the baby is potentially infected okay. which means that we take uh, we increase our level of protection uh, when it comes to uh, well what is it called in english we see it in swedish uh, you know face uh, protection yeah. <laughs> and so on okay um so you are allowing parents to visit because that was one of the questions yes and, yes we do and are if they, they are if they are healthy uh, now if so if mom's covid positive or dad's covid positive but they're healthy, um, but the baby's in the NICU. Can the parents come into the NICU? Not if they are, if we know that, uh, if I recall correctly, we want to know that the case, the parent has become COVID negative. And oh, so you do want them to be negative. So if they're positive, yeah. they're coming in. Yeah, I, that, that's how I recall it at least. Yeah. Okay. Um, so aside from that, um, I wanted to uh, just uh, one question that's come up is, um, are you doing delayed cord clamping still? Yes, we do. Uh, okay, as, as are we recommending that as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then one, one question I have, which is leaving COVID a little bit, but it still has an impact is, um, there was an article that came out yesterday on CNN that caught my attention, which had to do with mm -hmm. uh, the impact of all of this on research. Um, that our um, REB is becoming less strict about, well, or inactive. And so, you know, as journals uh, struggle to continue to produce, uh, mm. you know, uh, papers that they can fill up with their journals. Yeah. Do you have a worry? I mean, you, especially with your background, do you have a worry and with EB Neo uh, that some of the evidence is actually very poor these days? Uh, well, I. Well, good question. <laughs> I think I, I, I would think about it this way, that uh, we need to be aware of, um, uh, I mean, methodological know-how is very important always. And um, we need to be aware of a lot of the data that's coming out is rather descriptive in nature. Uh, for example, this uh, case series of 2,200 babies that came out some, uh, some time ago, that is practically a descriptive uh, uh, paper rather than an analytical paper. So it's very hard to, I mean, there's so many questions, not the least in the public, about risk factors. Is hypertension a risk factor? Is obesity really a risk factor? Um, and what is the association with age? Uh, maybe the, that is the, the primary risk factor and the others are more like uh, confounders or mediators. So I think that we need to be aware of uh, uh, that we need to go back to our basic uh, uh, research uh, training that uh, we have and read all the literature, the new literature that's coming out in the light of that filter. Yeah. Thank you. Um, there was another question that came out about are we universally screening mothers for COVID-19 in Canada and Sweden? And I can say in Canada, the answer is no. Yeah, and that's the same uh, answer for Sweden. I know that in one hospital, I heard that they are actually doing screening on all patients that is coming to that hospital, also the, to the obstetric unit. But I, uh, it, it's not a, 
a, a, a recommended strategy by the Swedish Neonatal Society, at least. Um, Stefan, I, I just wanted to say that we've we're coming up on 20 minutes, and I, I told you that's about as long as I was. <laughs> uh, yeah. I guess I would just say um, we have many, many comments and questions that have been put forward. Um, I would encourage you, um, you know, to um, we can look at the questions afterwards on the Facebook yeah. page. Feel free to answer any of these questions. Um, there's a, there's um, one question. Uh, that somebody who's asked, uh, and we'll maybe leave it with this, they've asked us to please answer this question, which is, for mothers under investigation, whom the COVID-19 test is not yet ready, do you separate mothers from babies? Uh, it depends slightly, I would say, because if, we, if the mother is having suspected symptoms and we need to take care of the baby, we prefer to take care of the baby the regular way, so immediately after delivery, and then reconnect if the mother is COVID negative. Right. Uh, but in the obstetric ward, if the baby is fine, I mean, we never do separation. Uh, and uh, so that's the short answer to that question. Uh, but we have the test ready in a few hours now, so it's, um, that's, that's it's not a long separation at least. Okay, and, and I know there's more questions coming, but I'm mindful of time. Uh, Stefan, if you are willing to answer some of these questions after yeah. the line. Uh, yeah. To those who have tuned in and listened, thank you for listening. Yeah. Uh, I really appreciate being able to connect with you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> you a, a friend, a colleague, and a social media fellow entrepreneur. Uh, if you're looking to see what 99NICU is all about, um, it's been going along the bottom of the screen for some time. Uh, yeah. at www.99nicu.org and you can find uh, myself and links to whether it's uh, Facebook, YouTube uh, at www.allthingsneonatal.com Anyway, have a wonderful day, stay safe yeah. and all the best to you and your family. Yeah, all the best to you and thank you Michael for having me on the, on the show. And thank bye. You. Yeah. Okay, bye bye. <laughs>